Hi, this is Richard Spears, the Walmart photographer for Digital Photography School. I had had somebody ask me how I did a particular picture. It was a uh, HDR composite picture with kind of an edgy look. And uh, this is an edgy technique that uh, I originally learned from studying the works of Joel Grimes. And kudos to Professor Grimes on that. Uh, but somebody wanted to see how I did this particular picture and I thought uh, that this would make a good tutorial. So let's give this a go. You'll have to excuse my uh, Texas accent and you'll also have to excuse the fact that I've never done a tutorial on video so this is going to be a new experience for me too. We're going to start out in uh, Adobe Bridge and this is the picture that I ended up with. Uh, I liked it because it has a little bit edgier look and uh, has that HDR look that I that I really like, that edginess. This is the original picture. This was taken at a uh, barbecue cook-off and I was looking for interesting characters and uh, the most interesting guy that I saw that day was uh, selling hats. He's in a little tent and I liked the way his portrait looked but I didn't like the background. Uh, the background has a kind of an ugly van and a part of a tent and uh, so when I got back to my house I thought uh, if I could composite that onto a, a different background I'd have a much better looking portrait and then I found uh, this background that I'd taken several months ago this is uh, an old dirt road uh, in the uh, Texas Hill Country so uh, let's go ahead and start with a composite we're going to open up uh, the, the portrait and we're going to open it up in Camera Raw. Uh, now in Camera Raw we're going to do a couple of things. First of all we're going to uh, increase the fill light. Uh, I've already increased it quite a bit. And we're going to bring the contrast down and the clarity up just a little bit. Then we're going to open this image up as a smart object and the way that we'll do that is by holding down the shift key and when I hold down the shift key uh, the open button turns into open object. This allows us to open it as a smart object. Okay, so now we have him open up in uh, Photoshop as a smart object and the the first thing that we do as a smart object is I'm going to duplicate it, but I'm going to duplicate it uh, smart object via copy. And what that does is it allows me to have two copies of it, but I can go back and edit uh, those original pictures independently of each other. The second copy, I'm going to open it back up, back in Camera Raw, and we're going to convert this one to a grayscale. We're just going to play around with the settings a little bit until we come up with uh, an interesting looking black and white conversion. And I like my black and white conversions to uh, have a little bit of uh, contrast and edginess to them. We're going to keep the contrast low because some of the other things that we'll be doing we'll be adding contrast so uh, we can keep the contrast low and bring up the blacks a little bit yeah, it's starting to look fairly good okay we'll, we'll go with that now we've got a black and white image and the original color image we're going to take the black and white image and we're going to blend it uh, with the overlay blend mode and that combines the black and white with the color version and it gives it more of an edgy look to it and uh, we might go back and alter the color version just a little bit just to give it uh, a little more this or that um, I'm really kinda liking that might give it just a tad more contrast He's really got some interesting blue eyes. We'll work on that also. And once we've uh, done that, then I'll combine the layers. We'll flatten the image to combine the 
combine the layers. Then I'm going to add another layer. And on this layer, we're going to add a Gaussian blur. So we'll go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And it's at four pixels. That's about right for this setup. And we're going to change the blend mode to overlay also. And again, this increases the uh, contrasty look a little bit. And it's, it alters the color just a little bit too. But we're going to bring down the opacity until we get something that's kind of pleasing. Then right about there, that's at 43%. We'll go with that. Then we'll flatten that image. Now I'm going to add another duplicate layer. And on this layer, we are going to use a high pass filter. And the high pass filter basically uh, makes the edges uh, uh, where there's some contrast. It gives it a little bit, bit more of a edge definition, makes it a little bit sharper. And we're going to do the uh, radius at about four pixels on the high pass filter also. And then we'll change that to overlay. You can play around with the different uh, blending options. Uh, overlay, soft light, and hard light all give it a kind of a distinct look. And you can play around with it. Uh, once we change it to overlay, again, we'll play with the opacity. Usually 100% is not what I like, but uh, in this instance, we'll keep it at about... Uh, Right around in there, 60, 75% is good. And then again, we'll flatten it. And I always like to take the color saturation down just a little bit. So we'll go to an adjustment level, hue saturation. And we'll take the uh, reds down. 10 or 15 percent, and same thing for the yellows. And just a little bit on the master. And it's got kind of an interesting look. Now at this point, I might go in and add a little more contrast to his eyes, but uh, give them a little bit more color but uh, I kind of like the way that looks. Now we're going to do a selection around this gentleman so that we can cut him out and put him into the uh, background image over here. So I'm going to use the quick selection tool and we're just going to do a fast um, selection around him. I've learned that you don't have to be very exact in these uh, selections because you can always go back and refine your edge. You can, If you get too much of something you can also hold down the Alt key and uh, pull in that selection a little bit. Like I said, don't worry about uh, getting every little pixel in there. And that looks pretty decent. Another little trick that I sometimes use is the uh, uh, quick mask mode. This lets you see real quick uh, how your selection is looking and if you've got a couple pieces extra or something that's not selected you can turn on uh, the quick mask mode and add something that uh, that you don't have just uh, change your brush to black and paint in with black the things that should be in the mask and switch over to white to remove the items that should not be in the selection. And once again, like I said, you don't have to be super... Oh, there's a piece there at the top. You don't 
have to be super exact on just every little pixel. Like a lot of people who do uh, composite images, I used to spend a lot of time, sometimes hours, uh, doing a selection around a subject. But um, a lot of times, just a real quick selection is all you really need. Uh, once you finish with the quick mask, we can go back to our uh, quick selection tool and then go to Refine Edge. And this lets me see how my selection looks against a variety of different backgrounds. Right now it's on a black background. And I can use the Edge Detection tool and make sure that uh, the areas around his hair have a good selection around it. And sometimes you'll get more than what you need to. Again, you can always paint out extra. And like I said, it doesn't have to be exact. Close is all you really need. And that's not too bad right there. That's using a smart radius of uh, five pixels. And it uh, pretty well guessed what needs to, to be included. So we'll go ahead and create a new layer with the layer mask. And there's our bearded man already cut out. And okay, once we have the person uh, selected and cut out, then it's time to put him into the background. So here's our background. We're going to take our picture of the bearded guy and I'm going to drag that uh, window down a little bit. And now we're just going to use the Move tool. We can hit M to select the Move tool. And we're just going to move that layer with the layer mask onto our background. And nine times out of ten, you're, the person that you selected is not going to be the correct size, so we'll have to use the Transform tool. Uh, on a PC, it's Control-T. Uh, to select the transform tool and since this picture is bigger than my background I can't see all the handles so I'm going to hit a control zero so to resize that and then we're going to hold down the shift and grab one of the handles and we'll resize him a little bit and uh, that's about right there and then uh, I'll, I'll spend more time doing this just uh, trying to figure out how big I want the person and resizing everything and just kind of moving it around a little bit. I kind of like the way that looks right there. And once we've got him in position, uh, at this point uh, a lot of times I'll go in and I'll make some uh, levels adjustments so that uh, I can change the levels and that way I can try to match the shadow level and uh, uh, highlight level of the two layers so that they they, they look uh, convincingly real so that it doesn't look like a cutout or a composite image. That's what we're going for is uh, so that the two images have kind of a similar uh, color tone uh, so that it looks like they were shot in, in the same light. Here you can see obviously the light is a little different on him than it was the day I shot the background. I have learned a shortcut though. There's a plugin for uh, Photoshop that I use quite a bit. I used to, I would uh, spend time going through and doing color adjustments and, and photo filters, but there, this plugin saves me a lot of time. If you, if you can get the plugin, it's a really nice uh, addition to Photoshop. Uh, and it's called uh, Topaz Lab, uh, Topaz Adjust. Uh, and it is just such an incredible tool. Saves you a lot of time on, on composites. And, oops, before you use that, you have to combine your images. And the way that I like to do that is Control Alt Shift E. And that makes a, a layer on top of everything that has all of your elements combined. Now we'll go to Topaz Adjust. And this will do a, a really nice uh, uh, color scheme that it, it applies to all of the all of the uh, layers and makes them very uh, 
uh, believable. Uh, you can see there's different options for different uh, uh, different levels of uh, that HDR effect that I like. Um, the one that I like the most was this uh, preset called Autumn. It's kind of a warm color tone. And that's the one that I like, so we'll click Apply and click OK. And then it'll apply the uh, color scheme that it just added. And uh, there's our uh, bearded guy, and he's now on a uh, lonely Texas road. And I, in my opinion, it looks a lot better than our original image of the guy in front of a tent. So that's how I do uh, a lot of my composites. Uh, it's just a matter of that uh, edgy technique at first using a, a camera raw and uh, mixing it in with the right background, playing around with the shadows and uh, sometimes using a, a plug-in like the Topaz Lab. Hope you enjoyed the uh, tutorial. Hope it wasn't too boring. Uh, if you like this, I'd like to hear from you. My website is rspearsphotography.com or you can go to richspears.com and like I said, I'd like to hear from uh, people from the Digital Photography School and if you enjoyed this video, I will try to make some more in the, in the future. Thanks again and have a great day.